Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we have the first Croctober video. I already apologized for last week not having um, some crock meal recipes out for you guys. I totally forgot that the, um, the month started in the middle of a week. So, duh to me. But I've got three recipes for you all and I know you'll enjoy them. They're definitely um, all of our favorite. All of these are our favorite. My personal favorite is the very last one. So don't forget to stick around for that. Uh, if I used any recipes, they will be linked in the description box below under my Dean Dinner Pinterest board. Y'all can always find any recipes that I use over there in Pinterest. I'm obsessed with Pinterest. <laughs> I, I'm on there all the time. But let's go ahead and get started with this first one. This one is French onion burgers. Um, I've made these before, but I made them on the stove top. This time I kind of tweaked the recipe and made them in the crock pot and they were really good. So y'all will see me just um, chopping up an onion. I used a whole onion. Um, I used two packages of the brown gravy mix, some Worcestershire, some garlic. Um, I also seasoned up the patties I used two and a half pounds of hamburger meat and y'all will see how many um, patties that ends up making us but we did have company over and y'all know we are a family that loves leftovers so we definitely had leftovers with this meal these were really good super easy to make since it's a crock pot meal throw everything in there go to work let it cook or if you're home you know if you're a stay-at-home mom like myself you can get other things done go play and enjoy your time with your kids and supper is done in no time but these three crock pot recipes um will just be start to finish so y'all will see me um prepping them all this is the only one i'm doing a voiceover on y'all know kids in the kitchen they're screaming and everything else but the other ones is me just talking um, but I do hope y'all enjoy this crock, crock pot video. And let's go ahead and get started into Crocktober. So y'all see me put the onions in there. Now I'm going to, um, I seasoned the hamburger, the patties with that complete seasoning. I love this stuff. I got a huge one from Big Lots. Um, so I'm just gonna season both sides of those. And I'm gonna add that on top of the onions. Now the next ingredients, I just eyeball. Y'all know I don't measure. I would say um, a tablespoon or two of minced garlic and a few dashes of that Worcestershire sauce. And then I used both packets of the brown gravy mix. And then I did the water that it says on the back of those ba of the packages. So it's a cup a piece. And then I put one beef cube in there. That's all I put in there. And then I'm just gonna put it um, on for, you can do it on high for four to five hours, or you can do it on low for eight. It's up to you. Um, and then the only thing I would change now that I have, you know, made this, I would only do one cup of water. Don't do both cups of water. Just do the two packages of brown gravy and do one cup of water. That will save you um, a lot of that um, excess water juice that you don't need. Um, it's going to make a thicker gravy that way. So that would be my only recommendation um, would be to just do one cup of water to two packages of the brown gravy mix. So you're just gonna put that on, let it cook up, and then um, once they're done, y'all will see me put them on a um, sprayed cookie sheet, and I put, I put some of the onions on top of there, on top of each patty, which except for mine, because y'all know I don't like onions. <laughs> but I put them on top of 
everybody else's um, patties and then I put um, a ton of cheese. I think I did like two slices per burger um, of provolone, but you can do whatever kind you want. And then I toasted up the buns. It made a, it made a huge difference toasting the buns for these burgers because they are kind of a little saucy, um, you know, French onion. So the toasted bun made a huge difference and it did huge difference and it was really good. Um, so y'all will um, continue watching and y'all will see all that. Hey everybody, so I've got another crock pot meal for you all. This is super easy. Y'all won't even believe it. Only two ingredients for the chicken mixture, and then I serve it with some frozen, frozen ravioli. Y'all, this is so easy, and my family loves this. This is actually one of Luke's favorite recipes, and it's so basic. So, I have put my lovely crock pot liner in here so that I don't have to clean it. And then I just have a bag of the boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And so I'm just gonna add six is normally, so there's two there. That six is normally good for us. It's three, four, five, These look pretty big, so I'm gonna say five is gonna be good for us. But of course, depending on the amount of people that you're feeding, um, you know, add a chicken accordingly. So, chicken and pesto, that is it. Can you believe it? That is it. Now, you can thaw your chicken out if you want to. You don't, it doesn't matter for this recipe. So all you're gonna do is take this whole jar, it is 6.7 ounces and you're gonna put it all over the top. You can cook this on high for four hours or you can cook it on low to six, six to eight hours. That's it. Absolutely it. So I'm gonna scrape this baby out so I don't lose all of its flavor. We love pesto in this house, so. Even Winston likes this. And normally you would think that green food is not a fan for kids. <laughs> uh, it's not a favorite, but he actually likes this. So, got all of that out of there. That's it, it's gonna cook down. And like I said, high for four. Or low for six to eight hours. You're just gonna let that cook. You want your chicken completely done. Um, thermometer, if you do, if you use a thermometer, thermometer should read 165. Um, if not, as long as you can shred it um, without any trouble, it should be done. So I'm gonna let this cook and then we will come back and we will get the rest of um, dinner finished. Okay, so all I do for the Parmesan noodles I showed y'all what kind I use. I just boil them as directions say. And then I've drained them and I've got butter in there. Put 
those in there. It's hard to do with one hand. It's going, it's going, it's going. Stop. Okay. Then I just put a bunch of Parmesan cheese. Stir it around. That's it. That is my easy Parmesan noodles, stuffed noodles. And um, you put your noodles down and then put your pesto chicken down. And that's it. So, that is a easy crock pot meal. Excuse the dishes, but here it is all plated up. I just got the noodles in the bowl and then some chicken. And I just roughly chopped that chicken. You don't want it like chopped, chopped like chicken salad or like if you're gonna mix it with something. I just did a rough shred, I mean. And then I've just put some extra Parmesan on top. And that is delicious. You can serve it with a veggie. You can serve it with some garlic bread. But that is it. I hope y'all enjoy this recipe. Hey everybody, so I'm getting supper going and um, it's another crock pot meal. So I hope you all enjoy this. I have made this before, but it's been a long time. And so I'm excited about making it again. These are sweet chili chicken drums. Um, I showed it or I talked about it on my um, grocery haul, a couple grocery hauls ago. I kept skipping, skipping and moving it up because I hadn't made it yet. Um, so a lot of people have asked and said they're excited to see this one. So here it is. I've got my um, liner in here. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of water in the bottom of this just to help with the bag so it doesn't scorch or burn. And this one is an important one to put water under because for me, I'm gonna do like, of a slow roast on these chicken drums um now this is my kasori cooker has one of these um if you have a kasori cooker use this if you have an instant pot i think instant pot ha instant pots have these racks if you have a regular slow cooker take some aluminum foil take some aluminum foil and wad it up in balls like little bitty balls i mean you know and then just line them on the bottom and that will help um, keep the chicken up instead of having it flat on to um, your surface because you're going to get more of, you know, just a, you're going to get a regular cook. You're not going to get a roasted, um, you're not going to be roasting them because they'll just be directly on um, your surface. So for this, you can either do it, you can do it this way, where as you see, you, you're not going to be touching this at all or you can do it a little bit lower if you have more to cook. For me, this should be perfect, um, but even if you do it the other way, you have the little notches um, where it's not gonna have it directly down. down. But I do really enjoy using this for um, chicken drum recipes because it helps you get that good overall flavor um, and it, it helps for the ending result as well, which y'all will see in a little bit. So like I said, this is my story cooker, so I'm gonna have this. Let's go over and season up the chicken drums and then we will put them in here. Okay, so I've got my two packs of chicken drums. There was six in each package. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and season them up with this um, Memphis inspired seasoning. Like for these, I know they're called um, sweet chili. Um, but I really enjoy doing like the barbecue and sweet chili. So this Memphis rub to me is perfect to get that barbecue -y flavor. And then you're going to add in the sweet chili at the end, which y'all will see. So I'm just going to take and rub them down with some olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, you can use regular oil. So I'm just going to rub them down. You can do this the night before, before you need to put it in the crock pot and let it sit. That would be extra good flavor. And so now I'm just, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna add a bunch of this stuff, okay?
I love the smell of this stuff. We get it's private selection, so you can get this at Kroger. Luke uses this a lot when he smokes meat, and it is amazing. So I'm gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes before I put it in the slow cooker. You don't have to do this step. I just like kind of letting it sit in there. So when that 10 minutes is up, we will put them in my casserole cooker. Okay, it has been 10 minutes. So now I'm just going to arrange these on top of here. I'm gonna try to get them all in one layer, but if not, it's okay. Squeeze in here. We can do this. Okay, that one's a little bit on top, but okay. So I got them all on here. Now you can cook them higher if you want. I would recommend making this like an all day slow cook to help with that roasting. So for my Sokoa, my <laughs> Kasori cooker, I'm gonna take and put it on low. Now, my low is 182 degrees for eight hours. So that is good. So all I'm gonna do is hit start. So like I said, you can cook it higher if you want it, if you need it faster, but the slower, the better, because it's gonna help soak in that flavor and you're gonna kinda, you're gonna roast them like you would in the oven. Um, and like I said, you can also, you don't have to have that rack if you don't want to. I would just recommend it so that, um, you know, it helps get that roasting, that roasting flavor. And then once they are um, pretty much done, they're gonna be like, 80 to 90 percent done um, you are going to put, pop them out put them on a sheet pan a sprayed sheet pan and then we are going to coat them with our sweet chili sauce and then we will put them under um, in the oven 400 degree oven just to help give them um, a little bit of skin um, a crunchy skin and it will help soak in that um, that sweet chili sauce so y'all will see that once they are done so here's what they look like before they get put in the oven. I checked with the thermometer and they reached 160. So that's perfect temperature for me to put these on here. And I'm going to coat them with the sweet chili sauce. So I'm going to do this very carefully. So I try not to break that skin. Oh, they smell so good. I love doing them this way because you get they get so much flavor. Now you're gonna do these in two different. Um, you're gonna coat one side 
and then you'll put them in the oven for a little bit and then you will turn them over and let them uh, you'll cut the other side and then put them back in there so there's what they look like and here's what the bottom of the pan looks like um, as you see they didn't have any problem they didn't stick on that then there is all kinds of juice the juices from um, the inside of the chicken and then um, it helped the bag having the juice underneath so but that is that and then with this I'm gonna serve it with some corn and then I'm probably gonna do some um, Parmesan noodles but this is the the Asian sweet chili um, the wing Thai sauce that I use so I can get it open okay to help with cross contamination remember your chicken is almost done but it's not completely done so I would recommend pouring some out and putting some in a bowl so that way you're not ruining in your ruining your whole bottle of Asian sauce because your Thai chili sauce because you're not going to be using it all so just do it this way and then you have the rest of that bottle to put in the fridge for the uh, next time or another recipe I love this stuff so much look you can see all the moisture that the juices from that chicken but I'm just gonna give these a pretty good coating now I'm gonna pop them in a 400 degree oven about five to eight minutes and then get them out and flip them over put some more sauce on there and then put them back in there for another five to eight minutes Now, if you like the tang, but you don't like it full chili, you can do half um, in this same bowl, mix some barbecue in there. And that's also really good. I've done that. Um, do like half and half, and it's really good. Like a tab barbecue sauce. But I've got them all coated, so now I'm just going to pop them in. In the oven. Here is what they look like when you when they come out and they're all done. I flipped them, sauced them on both sides. And we've got some uh, sister super rolls. I ended up making um, some like hash brown kind of thing. There's bacon and I don't know. Just kind of made it made it up and then we've got some corn. But that is it.